The king's brilliant and luminous daughter is losing all her light. To rescue her from the gloaming gloom and turn what's wrong to right, he'd brave the briny billows of the widest ocean's deepest deep, where pods of whales sirens sing themselves to slumbery sleep. He'll row past persuasive mermaids who beckon so convincingly to where the thirsty moon dips to sip the sweet and salty sea. Armed with but a bucket and a ladder and a steadfast heart that couldn't ever waver, can this daughter's father mine enough moon magic, enough to soothe and save her? To the moon and back is what we humbly call our tale. Is this going to be long? Long indeed. Well, in fact, it happened a long, long, long time ago. Thursday last. Uh, no, um, longer past. That much I know. At times she does ebb and inch and crawl so slow. Although in the moment next she does flurry, hurry, and so fastly flow. Well, anyway, long, long, long ago, long before the chestnut stuffing and the squished and buttery potatoes, long before the garlicky cheese grits and the stuffed and baked tomatoes, before mapled sprouts of Brussels and the Thanksgiving tofurkey. Long before the jiggling jello mold and the, uh, the, uh, um, ah, my mind's getting murky. Is this part of the story? Yeah, well, once upon a time, long ago, there lived a wonderful king. Once upon a time, long ago, there lived a wonderful king who was brave and dashing. A wonderful, brave, and dashing, and smart, and charming, and effervescent king. Effervescent? And ebullient. That means overflowing with fervor. And he was good at crossword puzzles, and opening jars, and... And, um... Well, other things. Lots of other things, and, um... Please. Hmm. Yes. More melancholy than a raindrop. Our unwhirling world has ground haltingly to a stop. Me no more useful than an old mop. Tucked away in her inky gloom. Walled away in the quiet of a room. Unspeaking as a household broom. Ah! Some light from the moon. That's the tonic that's chiefly needed. Some light from the moon, I indulgently repeated. Well, I burst into action, my booty unseated. I rose to my feet to rise to the task. What will I need, I heard myself ask. An oar and a bucket, a ladder and boat. On this trusty umbrella, I'll nautically float. To rescue my daughter, I'll go to the water. Yes, out where pirates hid rubies in secret sea caves. I rode past the breakers and high cresting waves. I followed a flock of flying fish and a flounder named Tim. Later, I met an old sea star who was missing a limb. Ah, he said, to get to the moon, sail to the ocean's farthest rim. Well, I rode and I rode till the air got quite smelly and I heard a grumbling rumble uh, like an ogre's hungry belly. So I paused for a sandwich of peanut butter and sea jelly. But the rumble persisted. The grumble insisted, and out of the sea rose a monster that consisted of barnacles and bad breath and a nightmare all twisted. A whale? An oversized codfish or kraken? Whatever it was, I was something to snack on. In far less than a minute, whatever it was, I was in it! Swallowed up whole in the wide gaping maw of his gullet with two dozen lobsters and a school full of mullet. Oh, the stench of his stomach. It, it was rank and it stank. A, a bilious stew of all he devoured and drank. It, 
I was trapped inside like a vault in a bank. But then an idea came from out of the blue as I stood waist deep in this intestinal stew. I had to make him burp. That much I knew. I pulled from my pocket a great tickling feather. I tickled his insides that were tougher than leather. And lo and behold, a, a burble was born. Would I ever survive, or would I perish forlorn? This burp, it was building with a queeze and a quiver. His insides started shaking a shuddering shiver, like a wee dam holding back a great mighty river. Swishingly, swirlingly, swam this indigestinous chap. If he didn't burp soon, surely something would snap. And then, and then, and then, Belched out into the water so salty and briny. But a mere speck in the ocean, I felt oh so, so tiny. Pardon me, friend, I, I don't mean to sound whiny. I thought I was safe till I heard a voice singing, pulling me down. A sweet siren sound like a bell that is ringing to my mind. The mermaid's mesmerizing music was clinging. Down I was pulled to my melodious doom. Down I was pulled to my sea-bottom tomb. But I thought of my daughter, alone in her room. I thought of her sadness. I thought of her fever. I couldn't drown now. I couldn't just leave her. So I plugged up my ears and I swam hard. Never again would I let down my guard. <gasps> I burst at the surface and gulped some air. Where was I now? Where was this where? My salt stinging eyes were blinded by light. It seemed more like day than the middle of night. It was the moon, luminous and bright, just like my dearest darling daughter. There was the moon, impossibly large with her toes in the water. I had come to the ocean's farthest rim where the sea meets the sky, and the thirsty moon sips on the salt sea and with her sweet celestial sigh. I climbed aboard my umbrella, and I plotted a course straight at her. I got out my bucket and unfolded my ladder. Some moon magic. That's the tonic for all that is the matter. Chuffing and huffing and puffing. I've journeyed so far and so far for nothing but nothing. Unmoored I am now in my heartbroken boat, for I've flailingly failed like a three legged goat. No magical remedy nor gloom's antidote. No more am I rowing. Down I am going to an abyss profound and unknowing. Once upon a time, there lived a wonderful king. Once upon a time, there lived a wonderful and brave and dashing and effervescent king. Effervescent. And ebullient, and he was good at crossword puzzles and opening jars and many, many other things. Is that how the story ends? For now. <laughs>